When I was little, I knew that my dad was doing important work. And as we are heading into a referendum, I feel like our family is linked to this current changing of this country because in the late 70s and early 80s, that's what my dad was doing. Ah. I haven't seen images of my dad in a little while. And Wajat Nyonga Buja, my home, is where I'm about to go back to. If I really want to understand my personal connection to this moment, I have to start with my dad, Cedric Jacobs' story. Oh, it's so good to be on Yunga country, back home. All my family are here. My daughter lives here. My four older sisters live here. My mum is here. All my nieces and nephews. And just a few days ago, we commemorated the fifth anniversary of my dad's passing. And this is his country. I know this journey is going to be confronting for me because I know how conservative my father was, but I want to understand him. Wow, what a beautiful way to be greeted home. The Karaks, red-tailed cockatoos, how gorgeous. And to think they're endangered and there's so many of them just here. A sign, thank you, Dad. When I think of my childhood, I think of just being showered with love. I am the baby of the family, and so that just came with a lot of affection. My cheeks were constantly kissed. This is home. <laughs> the old girl and her youngest daughter, how about that? So what, what's planned for tomorrow? Well, now Deborah is making a kangaroo stew. No. Yes. Debbie's making kangaroo stew. Debbie's making kangaroo stew. Yes. Yes. And she was going to make a damper, but Elisha says, I'll make a damper. So he's oh. making a damper. If it's going to be like, you know, raining. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> We're just going to say, Grace, Father, we thank you for this incredible day. We're able to gather, to gather together as a family. Okay, so my family has changed a lot. My four sisters and I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian home. Our father was a reverend of the Uniting Church. Our mum was also a pastor. She wants to save souls. Yeah, so she prays quite hard for her family, my mum, because she doesn't want us to go to hell. But she's a beautiful lady. <laughs> Despite all that, she's a beautiful, caring, loving lady. Mum had a lot of pride in how we looked because we were black kids and people would be looking at us. How to behave when people came over to the house, how do we behave when we're in church and we do not whisper when we're in church or else. It was constant. Dad was a Wajat Nyunga man and Mum the daughter of British missionaries when they met. There was so much against us, as you can imagine, back in 1963. There was a lot of angst towards Margaret getting marrying him because he's as black as I am white <laughs> and we went ahead five beautiful daughters and serving 13 lovely grandchildren what did you put in there Elisha oh some salt bush oh yes um, that mum had collected a little while ago and dried what a beautiful lunch on a rainy day everyone there you go Thank you for making it. Mmm, yummy. Norelda, come and let's go through this stuff. It's amazing what. So has you've done been... all these clippings. I did all these clippings over forty-three years ago. Look at the pile of them. Well, I'm really interested to know to see any clippings that relate to the Macarata. And... Well, they're here. In 1981, my dad was chairman of the National and Aboriginal Conference. They advised the government on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's affairs. NAC will talk about treaty. A National Aboriginal Conference committee is in WA to talk to the state's Aborigines about a Makarata. Dad led a delegation to the UN in Geneva to present a document for a Makarata. Makarata is Yolnu for coming together after a struggle or a negotiation of peace. Today, we would understand this term as treaty. 
Dad was away a lot. When he was travelling around the country for the NAC, Mum was his secretary. So we travelled to each remote community and outstation or home station just to sit down and talk with the people. It was a collective from what was said on both sides, the West and the East Coast. So consultation was the name of the game at that time and we had to listen very carefully. This all sounds very familiar, so similar to the groundwork for today's proposed voice to parliament. So the main difference is that it really, it strikes me that they are consulting and negotiating and working on a plan for Makarata from a standpoint of already having a voice. The yes. NAC was a voice to yeah, parliament. Uh, they were looked upon by Indigenous people as the black parliament. Yeah, and so now we don't have a voice. So the Uluru Statement is proposing voice, treaty, truth. Yeah. But we need to first have a voice, which the NAC was a voice, but now we don't have any. So you can imagine if they, if that trajectory was able to continue, we might have a Makarata yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, that's back right. then. I mean, so the hard work that the NAC did towards getting a Makarata, a treaty, didn't succeed because it had no power. The NAC was eventually abolished because it wasn't in the constitution. My dad, Cedric Jacobs, was born in York, east of Perth. At the age of nine, Cedric and two of his brothers were bundled into a vehicle and stolen as their parents worked on the land. They were taken to the Magumba Methodist Mission and taught the ways of the white man. It was just a matter of fact, like, this is what life was. But I think later in life, he started to really feel the bitterness and the anger being taken from his family. In our family growing up, Dad was a soft-spoken and very loving father, but it was a strict and God-fearing home. So it was a shock to everyone when at 18, I became pregnant with my daughter, Jade. When she came and told us that she was pregnant, of course I was, you know, um, but I loved her. You know, when you love your kids, you, you're gonna stick with them. The marriage didn't last long, and the result is a beautiful person my whole family love very much. Jade is just incredible, so what's the shame in, in having had her out of wedlock? There is no shame, and we shouldn't have got married in the first place. By 19, I knew that I was gay. I was falling in love with a woman, and I could not tell my parents. I just said, all right. And when are you going to tell mum and dad? <laughs> so I, I sat her down when I was about 22, 23 um, and said, Mum, Marion's more than my friend. She's my girlfriend. She's my partner. I'm, I'm a lesbian. I was devastated. I remember looking at her saying, Neroli, you're not gay. We didn't set the stage for that. That was your doing. You showed no signs of being emotionally attracted to female couldn't face my dad, because um, daddy's little girl couldn't tell him, you know, within a matter of years that I'm pregnant out of wedlock and now I'm gay. I would often hear in our home that, um, that, that gays were going to hell, that AIDS was brought by God to punish the gays. Even though I know this about my dad, there are still things I'm only just facing about him. When I was a child, he was the founder of a conservative political party that held anti-gay views. But what would you have uh, the penalty for homosexuality? Well, I would uh, certainly imprisonment and uh, the birch if it's, if it's uh, continued. Mm, I think it's truly incredible what she's overcome. Um, coming out is hard <laughs> um, in any family, um, but to do that... Um, to do that in her family where, oh, I can't help it. <laughs> Damn it. To have come out and push back against that and say, well, this is who I am and this is how I'm going to live um, is inspiring, actually. I never had a conversation with my dad about being gay. And the closest it ever came was on the day of marriage equality, the, the actual vote, the result of the vote. My dad phoned me to say, mum told me the yes vote got up. And I said to him, how do you feel about that? And my dad said, I just want my family to be happy. And, uh, and, and I cried when he said that because you know, all these years, he just wanted me to be happy. 
And I wish I had more conversations with him because the following year he passed away. So I really hold on to that conversation.